Hi there. So um, I just wanted to give a few quick thoughts about the changes to the NeurIPS submission process this year as opposed to last year. They've announced this on the website, on Twitter, with a video and so on, and I thought I might share some thoughts on that, and maybe some of you haven't heard yet, in case you're planning to submit or thinking about it. So, desk rejections. Uh, it, ACs, area chairs, have the ability to desk reject papers that they feel strongly are not going to be uh, passable to the reviewers. Um, they did an experiment last year where the ACs were simply supposed to mark submissions that they would desk reject, and it turned out that ACs aren't very good at estimating which submissions are going to be rejected by the reviewers. That might be because there wasn't really anything at stake, because it was just kind of a, uh, let's see how this works. But <clears throat> it is definitely a move to reduce the number of submissions because the field is exploding and we lack reviewing power, reviewing uh, people. So this is a move to reduce the number of people that um, have to review something because there will be fewer, fewer papers. Um, I don't know if, if this <laughs> increases the quality overall. If your paper gets desk rejected, um, there's usually like some obvious reason for it why an AC decided it's not worth it. Um, they probably haven't read it in depth, uh, but there, there might be some kind of overall structural issue that, or like the introduction uh, has many typos or, you know, that like so look for the obvious things even though your work might be good, right? Right, second, um, all authors of a paper have to be able to review if asked to do so. And again, this is a stab at this kind of reviewing crisis, but I have mixed feelings about this. Like, I really think this is a move in the wrong direction. It will increase the number of authors because a lot of people have been kind of free writing in that they're submitting papers, but they aren't reviewing other papers. Um, even though they would be competent researchers simply because reviewing doesn't get you anything. So there's no incentive to do reviews. Maybe you can say you're a reviewer, but then there's every incentive to do bad reviews, like two line reviews where the first line says, you should have compared to my paper, reject, like, fuck you if you're a your reviewer like this. Um, in any case, like a lot of times, and this hits, for example, like universities where you maybe work with a master student and the master student does some of the pre-processing of the data and, right, and they don't really have a clue about the machine learning, but they still contributed. So why shouldn't they be an author on the paper? They might even have been, have written that section about the data pre-processing. And now they're asked to review entire papers about topics where they're not really familiar with or you have some outside collaborators or you know that there are so many so many um things wrong with, i think this attracts the wrong kind of people and by forcing people to do it you encourage even more like all these reviewers that would not have reviewed what will happen is they will give shitty reviews and you will have even worse quality of reviews as a result um, I think this is the wrong move to reduce the number of load per reviewer. Um, I'd rather see abolish peer review completely in computer science, uh, in machine learning at least. That's my opinion, but that might be a video for another time. Um, <clears throat> I have plans how to replace it another time. Resubmissions have to be clearly marked. So if your paper is a resubmission of like if you had already submitted it in the last 12 months, it's been rejected, you have to say it is a resubmission and the changes you made to the paper. Again, with a, with, a, with a peer review process that actually works, this would make a lot of sense. You can say, well, it got rejected last time and here is how I corrected for what the reviewers criticized. But with the review quality right now, I mean, most of the papers, what are they gonna say? Um, it got rejected for nefarious reasons because the reviewer had a bad bowel movement that morning and I didn't really change much. So 
you encourage people to kind of blow out of proportion the changes they made and, and put a lot of additional unnecessary work onto papers that would actually be already fine, right? So, so this, all of these things, they, they'll just, they are, they're forcing people to do things and then the incentives of what we want aren't aligned with what we give. Right, so what you'll end up with is lower quality reviews and lower quality work. So the next two points are of a different nature. Um, the first one, though, I yeah, I, that that will probably. I mean, even if the ACs aren't perfect, um, you know that that's a good move. I like that. Um, <clears throat> the fourth point and the fifth point are a bit different. Uh, the fourth point is there is a new section in CMT apparently where you have to describe the broader societal impact and ethics around your work. Like, how will your work influence society? What are positives and negatives? Ethical outcomes? How can it be used? And this is targeted towards things like, let's say, facial recognition. If you develop a new facial recognition algorithm, you may be able to argue, well, this could be better used to identify, you know, um, victims in a, in a big crowd if you know there's a mass riot or something and then you don't know who is there is my relative one of the uh, people in the mass right that gets stomped on um, or you can also say this potentially helps a dictatorial state to govern their people because they can now recognize everyone um, for most papers it will be a bit shaky like if your third order optimization algorithm achieves a slightly better uh, convergence rate I'm not sure what's here but what what I feel is that this this is it's dumb in a way because this just means more work right basically now you have to demonstrate and yeah, it says you just should discuss positive and negative aspects but in essence everyone will be demonstrating virtue signaling how good their work will be for society and what good can be done and you know maybe a bit of bad but that can be mitigated right and and it just pushes in, into a more PR world so it goes from the science world into a more PR world it means extra work and who are the people that can afford to do extra work it's mostly the big companies right they can just put an additional team member on that, maybe even do additional experiments to show the societal impact of the work and um, who will lose out are probably small universities, independent researchers and so on that don't have that, <laughs> that capacity, that simply do their research, right, because it's an interesting research question and for almost every single thing in the world that has an application, it will have good and bad applications. So. Yeah, mixed feelings. So fifth is you are now supposed, if your paper gets accepted, to make a video about it and um, upload the the poster, basically link to the poster that you would use uh, and also link to slides that you would give your talk with. This is to make it more accessible to people, people that are not at the conference, um, which again, I have mixed feelings about. Again, it pushes it into this more PR realm. Right, talks are already live streamed. Um, most of them are for most of the large conferences, and I I feel it just gets people one step more away from the actual paper. Like it's very, so it allows people to grandstand and PR up even more of their work because even people who don't attend the conference now they're not going to read the paper. They're just going to watch the video, right? And in the video, you can always leave away those you know things that you would have to like that a reviewer makes you put in the paper right and in the video you can overblow it's it's camera ready no one reviews the video you can say whatever you want so it's it's just where before if you didn't attend the conference i think many people actually did read the paper uh watched talks where people could ask questions and now it's it's just one more pr thing and again who has time, energy, and money to in really invest a lot into this, it's mainly large companies, right? If you're small and you're time-bound and so on, you might not have equipment or time to do that. 
I am not for hire <laughs> to do your rips videos. <laughs> Just saying. I am uh, uh, don't have time to make these videos, really. As you can see, I'm in stellar quality. I think there's a bright glare right here. Um, so that was it for my uh, opinions on this, and I wish you a nice day. Bye-bye.